The population of the U.S. in the year 2020 was about 336 million people. By 2023, the U.S.'s population had grown to 340 million people. In this example, what we would like to do is, assuming that the population has been growing linearly, that that's been increasing at a steady pace, let's create a linear growth model equation that can talk about the population of the U.S. over time. All right, so the first thing, if we look at, because we know we're growing linearly, we can use our general linear equation, P equals A plus B times N. Now, let's identify our A and B value, because that's what's important in figuring out our, um, our equation. The A value is always the starting value. Now here we have a couple of different numbers and we have some choices. I like to pick the oldest value as my starting value because it avoids unnecessary negative numbers, basically. Um, and it kind of makes sense, right? You start in 2020 and then you get to 2023. So I'm going to use this 336 million people as A, my starting value. Now, this is finding the population over time and is talking in terms of number of years. However, number of years what, right? We're not gonna put the actual year in here a is our starting value, so it has to be the number of years since that starting value. So N is going to be our number of years since 2020. And P is going to be the population in that year. Now, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. Notice that here I'm given numbers like 336 and 340. Those are much easier to work with than 336 with six zeros and 340 with six zeros for the million. As long as you tell the, and define the variable in that term, we can kind of cheat a little bit. If we define our population in millions, we just know that whatever answer we get for P, we have to remember to say it's millions of people. And that keeps the numbers a little bit smaller for us to work with along the way. If you like writing the number out, great, that works too. All right, so let's go through here. P is equal to A, my starting value, we decided was 336 million people. So I'm just going to write 336 there, plus B is my rate of change. Well, I don't have a rate of change here. I don't know how many people per year it's growing. So I've got a little bit of a problem here. I need that rate of change in order to uniquely identify what's going on. Fortunately, I have been given another piece of data. So if you have a starting value and one other piece of data, we can come up with a linear equation that describes the situation. We just have to figure out the rate of change. All right, well, let's do that. Our rate of change is going to be how many more million people per year are we adding? So first, let's figure out the change. We went from 340 million or got to 330 million got to 340 million from 336 million. If we subtract that, we'll see that we had a change of 4 million people over that period of time. Now, how long was that period of time? Well, it's not one year, so I'm going to have to figure out how many years have gone by. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rate of change. It's happening between 2020 and 2023 which is three years that have gone by. So when we find the rate of change, we're just seeing how the population changed and then dividing it by however long in time we have. And then that's gonna give me my value. In this case, I'm gonna get one point, we'll just round it to two decimals here, 1.33 million people per year of growth. So that's about how fast our population seems to be growing. Once you've calculated your rate of change, remember that's the B value, and we can finish writing our general equation. So here, P is going to be equal to 336 plus 1.33 times N. 
And once you have information like this, we can answer all sorts of questions. For example, let's suppose that I want to find the population in the year, uh, let's say 2032. Okay, well, I wanna find the population, so I'm looking for P, which means I need to put N in. This is why it's good to write this, especially to remember your starting value here. I'm not gonna put 2032 in for N, I need to figure out how many years went by since 2020. Well, 2032 minus 2020, says that 12 years have gone by. So this is gonna be my n value that I wanna evaluate in my formula. So P is equal to 336 plus 1.33 times n is 12. The P is by itself, so I can just plug that whole thing into my calculator. And when I do 336 plus 1.33 times 12, I get oops, three, 351.96, so let's just say 352 million people. Don't forget to use whatever units it is that you were defining things in. Okay, we can also try to look out for certain numbers. So let's say, for example, I want to know when my population of the US is going to be bigger than 400 million people. What year? Okay. So we go back to our general equation again. P is equal to 336 plus 1.33 N. This time I know the population that I'm interested in is 400. And I wanna solve for N now. All right, so let's get our algebra brains back in here. We want to first get rid of anything added or subtracted. So we're gonna subtract 336 from each side. 400 minus 336 is 64, and that needs to be equal to 1.33n. And still not by itself, it's being multiplied by 1.33, so we're going to divide by 1.33 on each side. 64 divided by 1.33 is 48.12, let's just say 48 years. So we're going to get above 100 or 400 million people. Oh, we'll keep this at 48.2 for a second. Now, keep in mind, what did our N represent? Go back up here. N is the number of years since 2020. So I am looking at 48.2 years since 2020. So if I add 48.2 to 2020, I'll get the year where we get to 400 million people. So 2020 plus 48.2 gives me 2068.2. So sometime probably early in the year, in 2068, our prediction is that the U.S. will have over 400 million people. So if we kind of, as a quick little summary here, if we don't know the rate of change, we can identify the rate of change by seeing how the population has changed and dividing it by how much time has gone by. So that gives us that. And if we don't know the starting value, we're going to pick the earliest value that's given to us out of our list here. Carefully define your variables because that helps us later when we try to make predictions or plan out when to expect things to happen.